goals this year was to work on this project for my store. And I have been in the background, but now it's time to share it with you because the only way I'm going to complete this in time is if I make this some videos on my channel. Let me turn it around for you. This is the start of my 1930s kitchen. It's got a bit of a ways to go. I will make sure to give you a close up tour of what's going on in here so far, but today's video is going to focus on the sink and the items that are going to come along with the sink. This is going to be a room box that has both a kitchen and a dining room. I've obviously started on the kitchen. I have a few pieces all ready to go into it, but as you can see, I have a rough draft of a table and chairs that's going to go into the dining room. I also have a few rough draft pieces in the kitchen, and those are some of the pieces I'm going to replace today with my final designs. I do wanna give you a quick overview of what I have already made for this room. And if you're new here, hold on, let me drop something real quick. <laughs> If you're new here, you may not recognize these pieces, but these are what I called my subscriber specials. They were pieces that I designed and gave away the pattern for free at different subscriber milestones. This was my first one at 5,000 subscribers. This was my second one I made at, I believe, 10,000 subscribers. Yes. And then the third one I made at 30,000 subscribers. That is my Hoosier cabinet. And after that point, my channel blew up pretty big, which I'm so, so thankful for, but I haven't been able to squeeze in another subscriber special. So I'm very excited to do that today. Which means you're going to be getting a free pattern if you wanna make your sink as well. However, because this is for my store, it's also going to be available over there if you don't wanna worry about downloading and cutting the pattern out yourself. It will also come with the 3D printed parts so you don't have to hand make those. I'm sure you saw my practice sink tucked away in there. I'm going to pull it out, finalize the design, make any last minute changes, and hopefully create the finalized version in this video. I will be making the finalized version in this video. That's what the whole video is about. <laughs> So if you do watch this and you do want to make this sink for yourself, the link to everything is going to be in the description box below. It's just underneath the title of this video and sometimes you have to click a little arrow for it to open up. And if you're wondering, the room is not available yet. I'm still trying to finalize that too. So if you're interested in the, the room, it's coming eventually. So back to the sink, let's get started on that. This is the laser cut version of the pattern that I'm working with. However, the PDF has the exact same size pieces and you can download that to hand cut everything out. I'm working with the first sheet of mat board, 1 16th inch thick mat board pieces and then one cardstock piece. I saw on Gina's miniature studio, she did one of my patterns using a glue stick to glue down all the pieces and cut them out of mat board, which seemed to make things so much easier. So I will link her video on that process down below. I also wanted to suggest using some kind of Dremel or drill for creating all the little holes that's going to be so much easier than trying to cut them by hand. To begin construction, I'm going to cut out all three pieces that are marked with the letter A. One of the pieces has some engraved lines and some other engraved letters on the face of it. You're going to be gluing all three of these pieces together to create a triple thickness. Make sure that the piece with the engraved lines is glued on top. If you are cutting these pieces by hand, it might be good to wait until they are glued together before you drill the holes. I'm going to be using tacky glue for this process and sometimes tacky glue can make the mat board warp. So if you're using tacky glue as well or any other glue with some kind of water consistency in it, be sure to put it underneath something heavy as it dries so that it continues to lay flat. Now I've cut out two pieces that were marked with the letter B. One of them again has the engraved lines that needs to be glued on top. And I've also cut out four pieces that are marked with the letter C. The four pieces that are marked C are going to be glued together in pairs, so at the end you have two pieces that are a double thickness. As I did before, I'm going to be letting all these pieces dry underneath something heavy. If you don't have one, two, three blocks, you can use a book. It works just the same. While those dried, I cut out one piece marked D, two pieces marked E, and two more pieces marked F 
And then there were also two pieces that are marked with the letter G, and this is what they look like. I've laid out the pieces so you can see how they're going to go onto the sink. We do need to prepare piece F before we attach it to the sink back. This is going to be with the cardstock pieces. This is just an easy way I've done in the kit so that you can put some paper lines across the face of it. You just line it up with the engraved lines, add some glue, put the cardstock over top, and allow it to dry. If you are cutting this by hand, you can just use a straight edge paper cutter and cut several different pieces and lay it over the top. This is going to give a ridged effect which was common on these types of sinks to make sure that the water was draining into the sink basin. After it's dry, just cut away the rest of the cardstock. Before attaching these new pieces, we're gonna take one of our double thick pieces that we made with the C pieces, and we're going to glue them to the very far face on either side of the sink back. This is going to stick out and start to create the body of our sink. Once those are attached, we can take the piece marked F and glue it along the line and on top of the double thick pieces marked C. This is going to start to create a slope where the water can drain down into the sink. It sits right on top of those pieces we previously glued. Now moving on to the pieces marked E, these are going to be glued up underneath the pieces that are marked F and again along the engraved line. This is going to make the sides of our sink basin. This is what it looks like when both sides are glued in place. Now we can move on to the piece that's marked D. This is going to be the very bottom of our sink and it's going to be glued up underneath both pieces marked E. Make sure you have already drilled or removed the hole in your laser cut piece for the sink drain. Now we're going to work with the pieces that are marked G. These are going to go on either side underneath the piece marked F. It's very important that you make sure this larger hole is in the front corner of the sink. This is going to be where the peg of the sink leg goes into, and so it needs to be in the position for the leg to be correct. Once you glue it in, this is where the hole should be, and it will be mirrored on the other side so that you have the holes in the opposite corners towards the front of the sink body. Once this is all dry, we're going to add pieces that we glued together that were marked B. You're going to add glue along the front edges of all the pieces we just glued so that we can attach the B piece. You will see the engraved lines that will line up with your previously glued pieces. I found the easiest way to make sure everything lines up is to do this flat on my work surface so that I can carefully combine the two pieces together and then also make sure that the two sides of the sink line up. Now I'm adding a little bit of weight for a while while it glues and here is our completed sink body. At this point, it's a good idea to sand the edges if you want a softer, more rounded look. Make sure you are sanding along with the mat board and not towards the inside of the mat board because you can accidentally pull the paper up away from the surface of the mat board. Now we're going to be using this cardstock piece and this is going to create a very smooth finish inside of our sink. This is an optional step and does not have to be completed if you don't want to do it. The best way I have found to apply the cardstock is to push it down carefully with a pencil so that the hole of the drain and the hole of the cardstock line up. Then I can carefully push down the sides on either edge. I found another easy way to do this instead of with my fingers is with something like a highlighter or some kind of pen that has a very smooth edge. This allows me to crease the paper in the correct areas. Once that's in place, you may notice that there's a small amount of cardstock that's sticking up on either edge of the sink. Simply mark off however much is overhanging so that you can take a straight edge and cut off the excess. Depending on how you glued it together, you may not have anything to cut off. It just depends on the type of glue and how closely your pieces are together. I'm using a straight edge and a sharp blade to cut off the excess, and then I'm going to begin gluing this piece in place. This is going to cover over some of the edges of the mat board and make the sink look more smooth. Again, this is optional, and if you find this might be a little frustrating for you, it's not necessary to complete the sink. 
Once I have it in place, I'm using the highlighter again to push all the edges down and make sure that my glue process is smooth. Once that's dry, I can go ahead and paint the body of the sink with some acrylic paint. I highly suggest just using acrylic straight out of the bottle without adding any water for your first layer of paint so that it doesn't warp your mat board. Now we're going to be moving on to the sink legs. If you have the kit, which I will put a link to in the description box below, you will have some 3D printed legs in your kit. I will also be showing you how to make these legs from scratch, so don't worry if you don't have the kit. But first I'll show you how to install these. First you need to cut them apart with a very sharp craft blade, make sure to cut away from your hands. Once they've been separated from the extra pieces of printed plastic, there will be a peg on top of each leg that slides into the hole in piece G. Once you've dry fit everything and know that it works, you're going to add some tacky glue into the hole and around the edges where the leg is going to touch. It should fit very snug up in that corner and touch the sides of the sink. Now I can continue painting and make sure I get the legs and the bottom side of the sink. While that's drying, I'm going to show you how to make these legs by hand. You want to start with a barbecue stick skewer. You can get these at the dollar store or in most grocery stores. To begin, I'm going to mark out how tall the leg needs to be, which is two and a half inches, including the peg. I'm not going to cut it off yet because having the skewer definitely helps handling the leg while it's being made. I'm also going to cut long strips of paper. This strip of paper is a half inch wide. I glued it to the barbecue skewer and then once that was dry, started rolling it in a very tight roll. Once I got to the end, I glued it in place. I did add a few specks of glue along the way so that it wouldn't move. Once that was dry, I needed to make a tapered piece of paper so that I would have a tapered leg. I'm just putting the leg next to my paper and starting with a diagonal. I'm just kind of guessing at this point and it may depend on how thick your paper is or how thick your skewer is, so you might want to try this out and just see what you like. Before I begin rolling, I'm going to glue it onto the skewer. I just find this is a lot easier. Then I'm going to add glue all along, although you can practice roll it dry in case you're worried that you're not going to like the taper. As I'm rolling, I'm trying to keep it very tight to the previous roll that I made, but as you can see, because of the angle of the paper, it gets smaller towards the end. I'm just going to be using a basic pony bead for the bottom of this leg, and I'm pulling it up as far as I can over the tapered paper. Once everything is glued and dried, I wanted it to be a little bit smoother, so I'm just taking some joint compound and going over the edges of the paper. This is actually lightweight spackle that I'm using, but it's similar to joint compound. You can also use wood filler for this process. Once that's dry, I'm sanding it down, and this is actually going to make a pretty smooth leg. Once I'm happy with it, I can cut off the excess skewer. I do suggest if you are going to be making custom legs, you make them at the same time so that you know you're doing the same size paper and that everything's going to come out looking similar. Now that I have my legs attached and everything's painted, I want to put a gloss coat on top of my sink and I'm going to show you how I did this just in case you are following the same steps. I found a pencil covered in some paper and stuck through some foam. It was really great for holding the sink up off the surface while I sprayed it. Now I'm going to be moving on to the pipes and if you're using the kit you're going to have two squares. The bigger square has the lower pipes for underneath the sink and the smaller square has the upper faucet pipes that are going to go above the sink. You're going to have to remove all the extra plastic pieces. And just like I showed you for the legs, I am going to be showing you how to make these by hand if you don't have the kit, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Now when you put these together, you're going to be putting the U-shaped pipe underneath the disc shape, and then there's going to be an L-shaped pipe that gets hooked onto that one, and you want to make sure that there's this little dot that goes on top. So it's going to look something like this once you have it all connected together. This is going to be the pipe that goes underneath the sink. I found the best way to glue them together is with some super glue because these pieces are made of plastic. They all have convenient tabs and slots, so they fit together really easily. 
While that's drying, we can construct the upper faucet pipes as well. It's very similar. There is going to be a faucet head, and this one actually is going to need a little bit of sanding. Thankfully, you can sand this 3D printed plastic, and once it's sanded smooth, you can fit it into the lower part of the faucet, which is going to be connected to the sink. Once it's glued together, this is how it's going to look. The handles were just a little bit too small for my filament printer to handle, so we're going to be making them out of paper. Each handle is going to be made out of three of these X pieces and two little dots. We're going to be gluing all of the X pieces on top of each other to make a triple thickness. And then on top of those pieces, we're going to be gluing the two little tiny dots so that it looks like a little screw that's going to be holding this piece in place. Once I've made both of those, I can glue it on top of my 3D printed handles so that they're sitting on top of the tubes that are coming out of the back part of the faucet. This is how it looks once they're both glued in place. They will not be working handles, so you cannot turn them. We're also going to glue one on the back of the pipe here so it looks like some kind of shutoff valve. While we're making these pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut out this little circle that's going to be the piece that goes around our drain cover. If you're making this by hand, I'm wondering if maybe a grommet could work as well. We're also going to cut out piece H1 and H2 from the matte board sheet. This is going to be a little piece that's going to go up against the wall wherever the pipe hits the wall. Before gluing anything else together, we need to paint all of this. I'm doing a base coat of black and then a coat of silver over top of that. Except for the very top part of the sink drain because I want that to stay black so when you look inside of the drain, you can't tell that you, you, I don't want it to be silver in there. And I just use some super glue to glue this piece in place over the sink drain and let it dry. Now I can add my faucet pieces. The pegs on the back should fit snugly in the holes. However, if some gunk did build up from your spray finish, just make sure to scrape that out. Then you can add tacky glue. Since these fit pretty snug, I didn't feel like super glue was needed. Tacky glue worked just fine to hold this faucet in place. And here's how it's looking once I have the faucet and the lower pipes underneath the sink. And while I was at this point, I painted the circle that goes around the drain and glued that in place. If you're cutting this by hand, you could maybe even use a grommet or you could use a double hole punch type of situation where it's two different size hole punches. And then the H1, H2 pieces, these are going to fit on the back of the lower part of the pipes. And I'm not going to glue that on until I know that it fits correctly with the wall that I'm putting the sink against. So now it's time for me to show you how to make these pipes by hand. Uh, first I'm going to make a mess, of course, but you're going to need the pipe bending guide from the PDF download for the pattern. You're going to need some glue, some long strips of paper, some cotton swabs, and a bowl of water. Plus I'm going to be using just a scrap of this plastic from some packaging to protect my pipe bending guide because we are about to soak these cotton swab sticks in some water. It's important you're using the cotton swabs that have a paper stick for this process. The plastic ones just won't bend for you like these will. Once you've soaked it for a good 30 to 45 seconds, it depends on the brand on how long you're going to have to soak it, they will be able to bend. And I'm going to be using one or two of these sticks for each pipe. I'm bending it and then I'm just going to have to keep adjusting it because as it dries, it's going to want to stretch back out. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it and bending each one as I go. It's okay if the sticks are a little bit long now because we can cut them shorter once they dry. Once I'm happy with the shapes I created, I'm putting them in between something heavy while they dry so that they don't unbend during the drying process. For this U-pipe, you can see that I only used one stick for half of it, and that's because the whole pipe can't be made with one stick. So I just made the lower half of the U-pipe, and then I can add on another straight stick after everything's dried, just like you see here. So now that I have everything cut down to size, I can start assembling my pipes. Because these pieces are paper, I'm just going to be using some tacky glue and that should do the job, 
but the key here is going to be waiting for these joints to dry before messing with them. So I'm going to be gluing the straight piece on top of the U-pipe, and I'm gluing the faucet head on top of the other U that's going to be the back part of the faucet. And then the L shape, all of these are going to go together similarly to the 3D printed pieces, um, but you're just going to have to kind of envision what they look like because they don't quite look like pipes yet. The L shape had to sit in a upward position while it dried, so I used a 1-2-3 block to hold it against during that process. So here's what the finished pieces look like, and once they're dried, I can go ahead and start wrapping those long pieces of paper around the joints. So here you can see it's going to start looking like pipe connectors, and I tried to put pieces where I thought they made sense, but you can totally change this up. The only thing I highly suggest is that you put a wrap of paper around any place where the cotton swab pieces connect to each other so that they are extra protected and don't fall apart later. The pieces to hold the faucet handles were not on my pipe bending guide, so just cut those to be about maybe a quarter inch and glue those on top of our faucets. This is how they look for me. And then I'm also going to cut a shorter one for the shutoff valve that goes on the pipes underneath the sink. I made the handles in the exact same way with the X pieces. However, if you're making this by hand, it would be very easy to switch these out with a small bead that does look like a sink handle that you could turn and adjust your water flow. The last thing we need to do is create that little basin that's going to go up under the sink so that it has like an area for the water to drain. I'm going to be wrapping a lot of paper around this and I even added a little extra paper than the length of my computer paper and I just had to make sure that when I wrapped it I didn't add any glue except for at the end of the wrap. And I just had to make sure that this circle of paper was wide enough so it could cover up the entire drain hole. Once the end is dry, because I didn't add any glue to the inside, I can slowly pull up the edges to create something that looks like a bowl. This is going to be the area where the sink can drain and it will collect the water underneath and then it will go into the pipe. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can add some glue into the bowl and spread it around with a cotton swab and allow that to dry. I also did a similar process with this bowl making method to the back of the pipes where the pipes are going to connect to the wall. Now that all the pipe pieces are made, you can glue them into the holes and the areas on the sink that they need to go. This process can also be made a lot easier if you use some thicker wire to make the pipes. However, I wanted to find a way to make these with something that could already be found in most homes. So even if you did purchase the kit and you wanted to make more pipes, now you know how. Back to our painted sink, we are now going to be making some hooks that are going to go in these small holes underneath. When I was originally doing my research for this project, I found that many times pots and pans were stored under the sink, just kind of hanging there. So I wanted to create this in miniature as well. I'm using the wire from the kit, or you can also use some paper clips for this to create a J shape with a short straight piece on top, which is what's going to go through the hole and hold the hook in place. I'm adding some glue to the straight edge and I'm holding on to the hook with my pliers. And then I'm just going to put it through the hole and rotate the sink so that the flat edge is now sitting on top of the mat board, holding it in place. I added a little extra glue around the edges and allowed it to dry completely. Now I can hang some pots and pans as long as they have a hole in the handle. They can hang underneath the sink, giving it a little bit more realism, just like they might have done in the 1930s. Well, the sink is done, so I'm going to sign it just like I did the other pieces, and then we can put it into the room. I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but it seems to happen to me whenever I know I have to sign something that's going to be permanent. I have the worst handwriting ever, all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm gonna add the sink in place. I made this room specifically to fit this piece in this corner. And of course I had to add a window right above it because I think doing the dishes and working at the sink is always better when you can look outside and especially on a beautiful day tried to get a better shot of it from the front, but the camera decided not to focus. 
That was fun, but I am considering this the 120,000 subscriber special, so I think we should make a few more things. There is a page two to this pattern that has three more things we can make to kind of go along with this sink. The first thing we're going to make off of this page is out of all these shapes at the top, this is going to make a very small, thin teacup shelf. I'm going to start with pieces I, two pieces marked J, and one piece marked L. The two J pieces are going to be glued to the face of piece I along either side, making sure to line up the engraved line that goes through the center. That's going to let us know where to put the middle shelf. Piece L is going to be glued in between the two pieces marked J and against the back. There will be a slight gap, and that's okay. Now I'm going to use one of the pieces marked M as the center shelf. I'm just going to match it up with the engraved lines. It's best to let this dry a little bit and make sure the sides are completely straight. Now I'm going to be using one of the other pieces marked M, one piece marked N, and a piece marked O. Pay attention how these go together. O is going to be glued on top of piece N, making sure that the engraved line gets lined up so it's a continuous line. I know that sounds confusing, but I'll show you what I mean once it's together. You're going to glue the piece on top, and then you can see that this engraved line gets continued, just like that. And then the small circles will sit on top of the ovals, so you can really only see through the small circles. Then I'm going to glue everything on top of piece M, and this is going to be a triple thick piece, which I'm going to allow to dry with some clamps. Now, if you don't get this exactly right, it's okay, but the holes are making room for some hooks if you do want to hang teacups underneath the shelf. I'm going to add glue to both pieces M and N and glue that just inside the shelf. Piece O is still going to stick out a little at the bottom, so here you can see how you can still see the edges all around piece O. It is sticking out and that is okay. Now I'm using piece K. It's a little bit more decorative. It's going to finish off the top of our tea shelf. If you are using the kit, it already has some engraved pieces that you can have show, or you can turn them backwards so they don't show. If you're hand cutting this, you can just cut out some punches and glue them on top if you want something fancy in the corners. So this is our completed teacup shelf. I think it's really cute, but let's add some hooks to the bottom of it. So if you did have some teacups you wanted to hang, you could. For this part of the project, I'm making hooks just like I did for the sink. They are going to slip inside the small holes and the long part of the back of the hook is going to sit inside that oval we previously glued. I'm gonna add in all four hooks, add some extra glue and let it dry. And that's how you assemble the teacup shelf. Next, we're going to put together the long shelf, which is over here in the bottom right corner. Start by gluing both pieces that are marked V together. This is going to create a double thickness, which will help your shelf be strong, especially when you start putting other miniature items on top. Just like the other parts of the kit, I have an engraved pattern on these pieces. However, if you don't want them to show, you can just glue the brackets together in a different way. You are going to be gluing two of them together. So if you want the engraved pieces out, you can glue them that way or you can glue them inside. I'm going to be gluing them out so that you can see the pattern. I'm gluing these together so I have three pairs of two that are glued. Now I'm going to sand the shelf. It's a little bit easier to sand this before you attach the brackets. I'm adding glue to the very top square and top edge of the brackets, and these are going to slide into the back of the shelf. It is going to stick up just a tiny bit on the top if you're using 1 16th inch mat board, but I think that gives it a very homemade feel to the shelf. that You can actually see how it goes together. I'm adding in all three brackets and I'm going to allow everything to dry. This is how it looks once it's put together. While that's drying, we can put together the step stool, which honestly might be my favorite piece out of the set because it can move. So we're going to use all of these pieces in sheet two. 
First, you're going to cut all of the pieces marked P, and these are going to be easier to drill the holes once you glue them together if you are cutting these by hand. First, I'm going to glue them into sets of two so that I have two pieces that are a double thickness. I'm going to let those dry completely, laying flat. Now I can glue the step stool seat, which is going to again have an engraved pattern. You can glue that on top if you want it to be seen or glue it underneath if you want it to be hidden. After I've glued the two S pieces together, which make up the seat, I can glue the two pieces that are a double thickness marked P underneath the S pieces. And I wanna make sure that the holes mirror each other on either side. They have to be across from each other for the project to work. This is how it's looking once it's glued, and I'm going to let that dry. It's a lot easier to do this on a mat to make sure everything's at a 90 degree angle. While that's drying, I'm going to cut out pieces Q. There's going to be four of these pieces, which again, you're going to glue together to make a double thickness. You can decide if you want the designs to show or not. Once those are dry, I'm removing both pieces marked R. These are going to be the step tops that are going to allow the user to step up on the step stool. I'm gluing them at the very edge and the top levels of piece Q, and I'm going to glue both sides on either side, just like this. There is no overhang for the step. If you want this to work correctly, you have to glue it right at the very edge of piece R. I temporarily added the toothpick to allow it to dry at a 90 degree angle. Piece U is an optional piece to add, but it acts as a handle for the user in real life, if you're using something like this, to pull the steps down in order to convert it into a step stool, and it helps pull the step back up without having to touch the area where the foot steps onto. There are two pieces marked T, and these are going to be glued up underneath the seat and between both the pieces marked P. These help give your stool a finished look and help brace either sides. So now we're going to work with the toothpicks. If you have a kit, you're going to have toothpicks in your kit. If you don't, then you need to find toothpicks that approximately fit the hole that you drilled. What I'm going to do is insert the toothpicks and I'm spinning them just a little bit. It helps them go through the mat board and I'm going to add them in every single hole except for the one you can see left empty here on screen. In order to glue these, the best way I found to do it is to add glue just to one side, and then I'm going to slowly spin it back through the hole. This is going to allow the glue to coat the inside of the hole as the toothpick goes through. As I'm doing this, I'm making sure that my two sides are staying parallel as I'm adding each individual toothpick. Now I'm going to let everything dry completely. Make sure you do not permanently glue the toothpick into the stair step just yet. I will show you how to install that when we get to that point. This stair needs to stay free of toothpicks. Once everything's dry, I'm going to use some flush cutters to cut the very ends of the toothpicks off. This makes for a very clean yet still homemade look to the step stool. Before adding the final toothpick, I want to do a very light coat of paint because it is going to be difficult to paint it once it's installed. And that's because the steps are going to move around it freely and adding paint could accidentally glue the steps in place. Once the painted toothpick is dry, I'm going to line up my steps and my stool just like you saw on screen. Then I can slowly thread the toothpick through all the holes of the stool and the steps. As I get all the way through, I'm going to check to make sure everything moves freely. And if I have any issues, it might mean I need to sand the holes a little bit bigger or sand down my toothpick. Either way, you want it to move something like this. Now I can follow the same toothpick gluing method, but I'm just gonna have to be a lot more careful to make sure none of the glue gets on the step at all. I'm gonna allow that to dry, cut off the edges just like I did the other toothpicks, and then it's ready to be painted just like everything else. So let's do that. I'm going to go with a very basic brown finish because in my project, the Hoosier cabinet is a just a wood looking cabinet. And so I wanted something to match that because my other appliances match each other. I want it to 
look a little bit rustic, but I'm also going to be adding some more chalk pastel. Of course, you can finish yours however you want to. You can also highlight those little engravings, or if you added on some punches onto yours, you can highlight those as well, giving it a little bit more interest. I'm lightly adding some black chalk pastel to the top of my step stool to make that look very worn and also into the cracks and corners of the shelves because those would be the areas that built up the most dirt and grime over the years. I also noticed there were some areas on my step stool that needed a bit more touch up. It was a pretty difficult one to paint. Now that all the pieces are put together, let's put them all into the kitchen and get a few final photos. can't remember if I mentioned this before, but I did design this step stool specifically to fit underneath the sink for storage reasons. I saw it in a reference when I was looking up 1930s sinks, and I just thought that was such a cool feature. I'm not going to be attaching the long shelf to the wall until after I get the final room put together and add the wallpaper, so for now I'm just kind of laying it on the floor, but you can get the gist of what it would look like once everything's attached. And because my room is not looking very beautiful at the moment, I had to add some wallpaper and some fake tile just so you could get an idea of the vibe I'm going for. It's not perfect and I won't be using this wallpaper in the end, but I thought the forks and spoons were really fun. So here's a more aesthetic look at the 1930s sink set. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will share with me if you do decide to make these patterns for yourself. Remember to download them in the description box below. I have some files that are optimized for the Cricut. I have some files that are good for a laser cutter and the PDF is good for people who are cutting things by hand, but I think everyone needs to download the PDF because it will have some helpful hints for you when it comes to putting them together, no matter how you're doing this. I will also have a link to my store if you do wanna just buy the kit so that you don't have to do any of the cutting yourself at all. The kit also comes with the 3D printed pieces. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel. That's what makes these subscriber specials so exciting. I feel like I can give back to you after you've given so much to me. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> my zipper keeps making noise. Shh. Is it weird if I tape my zipper? My eyebrows look weird in the viewfinder.